3. In this lecture, we will talk about several ways of solving recurrences. But unlike a discrete math course, we are not going to solve the recurrence exactly. Instead, we are going to find asymptotic solution of a recurrence. We will introduce three different ways. The first one is called recursion tree method, and then we will talk about substitution method, and finally we will give the master theorem. But before we solve the recurrence, let us review what is meant by a recurrence. So a recurrence is a function, let's say f of n, but the values of f of n can each be defined based on other values of f. For example, let us see the following recurrence. We have f of 0 equals to 0, f of 1 is equal to 1. And then, for other values of f of n, where n is an integer greater than 1, f of n can be expressed as f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. Now, using this recurrence definition, we can generate the sequence 0 for f0, 1 for f1, and then 1 for f2, and so on and so forth. So we get 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on and so forth. And this is the so-called Fibonacci sequence. Now to solve a recurrence means that we want to get an explicit formula that computes f of n. So rather than finding f of n one by one using the older values of f, we want to find fn directly based on the n. So for instance, for the previous Fibonacci value f of n, it turns out that we get an explicit formula as following. So it is rather complicated, but we can show that this formula is correct. So when we plug in n is equal to 0, we will get 0 as a result, n is equal to 1, we will get f1 as a result, and in general, given the value of a specific n, then this whole thing will compute f of n. But on the other hand, in particular for this course, we will just need to solve the recurrence in the asymptotic sense. So for instance, let us look at a different recurrence. This time, f of 1 is known to be equal to 1, and to get f of n in general, we first get n and then add the value of f n minus 1. Now, if we look at this carefully, then we will see that the value of f of 2 is equal to 2 plus f of 1, so which is equal to 2 plus 1. And then f of 3 is equal to 3 plus the value of f2, and f2 is equal to 2 plus 1, right? So f of 3 is equal to 3 plus 2 plus 1. So in general, f of n is equal to n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and so on and so forth up to 1 for integer value of n. So if we know this, we can actually find out f of n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. But if we just need the recurrence solved in asymptotic sense, then we may just say f of n is equal to big O of n square, or f of n is equal to theta of n square. Now, why do we want to solve recurrence in this course? We are in an algorithm course, and let's look at some of the algorithms that we have already studied. We see that certain kind of algorithm will solve a problem by solving subproblems in the same form, and then we will make use of the solutions of these subproblems to solve the original problem. And these kinds of algorithms is called a recursive algorithm. And the time complexity of them can often be expressed using recurrence. Let us see some examples. So for instance, let's review the binary search. We have a sorted array let's call it A, and then we have a value of x. We want to check whether x appears in this array A. 
Now the binary search method tries to search for x inside this a using the following procedures. We first compare x with the middle item, let's call it z, of a. So a is a sorted array. We look at the middle entry, and then let's call this entry the item z. We compare x with this middle entry. Now if x turns out to be the same, having the same value as this z, then we can Im immediately re reply that x is found inside this array. But on the other hand, or more often, we will find that x is different from z. Then depending whether x is smaller than z or x is greater than z, in the first case, if x is smaller than z, then we will continue to search for x in the left half of A. On the other hand, if x turns out to be greater than z, we will try to search for x only in the right half of A. So we see that the original problem of binary search in a long array is now converted into a subproblem, and this subproblem is going to search for x in a shorter part of A. But nevertheless, it is the same form of the original problem. So this is the so-called recursive algorithm. Let us take a look of another algorithm that we have just studied, the merge sort. So we begin with an unsorted array, let's call it A. Merge sort tries to arrange the items of A in increasing order. So first of all, if A has one item or fewer, then we don't need to do anything. So in general, we look at the case where A has more than one item. Then what do we do? We will divide A into two halves, the left half and the right half. We will use merge sort focusing only on the left half of A, so this is as a problem. And then we will also use merge sort on the right half of A, so this is another subproblem. Now once these two subproblems are solved, so we have the sorted part of the left half and also the sorted part of the right half, then we will use the merging step to combine the result of the sorted left half and the sorted right half to get a sorted array. So the process of merge sort relies on the process of merge sort on a smaller part of A, here and here. So this is recursion. Now if we use T of n to represent the running time of an algorithm with input size n, then for the recursive algorithms, Tn can usually be expressed by using a recurrence function. So for instance, for binary search, when we try to search for x in an array of size n, then we will compare x with the middle entry using one step, and then after that, we will only search one half of the a. And this part, the time is t of n over 2, because we are dealing with a subproblem of size n over 2, and then we are using the same original method. So the time will be t of n over 2. And you, we see that this is a recurrence function. As for merge sort, what do we do? So in order to solve for a problem with size n, we first merge sort the first half using t of n over 2, and then we sort the second half using t of n over 2. And finally, we will combine the results merging the left half and the right half using n extra steps. So in that case, t of n is equal to t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2 plus n. Because of this, we will, we will know now the reason why we want to solve recurrence in this class and why we just need the asymptotic sense.